In today's video, we're going over the diagnosis of slap tears in the shoulder. So slap tears are classically a little tough to diagnose. Usually patients are gonna complain of some sort of deep, vague pain within the shoulder. They will often have pain with adduction as well as overhead activities. A lot of times it's associated with clicking and popping. The prevalence of slap tears increases with age. And they're also more common in individuals that do a lot of overhead activity. They also can be very, very common in overhead athletes. Andrews found that around 83% of patients that were undergoing arthroscopy had an accompanying slap tear, right? So this means that you may find this a lot in your athletes. They're also very commonly asymptomatic. So Schwartzberg in 2016 was looking at asymptomatic shoulders, so patients that had no pain. These patients were between the age of 45 and 60, so again, a little bit older. And what he found is that three quarters of these folks, so 75%, actually had a slap tear, and they didn't even know it. So in today's video, we're gonna go over a systematic review and meta-analysis from Dean et al. in 2023, going over the most sensitive and most specific tests for slap tears in your patients. O'Brien's test, you can have your patient seated. From here, we're going to flex the shoulder to 90. We're gonna to go to 10 degrees of horizontal adduction, full internal rotation. I want you to resist my downwards pressure. Resist, resist, resist. How bad did that hurt? Not bad. We're gonna flip into full external rotation and do the same thing, resist my downward pressure. Did that feel better or worse? Better. Better. So essentially, if someone has more pain here and less pain here, that's a positive special test. Speed's test, this test is described in their medical literature in a variety of ways. The most common of which is flexing the patient's shoulder to 90. We're gonna fully externally rotate, palm up, and then from here, resist my downward force. Any positive special test would be the reproduction of the patient's familiar symptoms in the bicipital groove region. We can also perform this speeds test starting with the arm at the side here, and I want you to flex up to 90, but I'm gonna give you some resistance, all right? Go ahead, push, 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 and relax. A positive special test, again, is gonna be pain or reproduction of the patient's familiar symptoms in the anterior portion of the shoulder and the bicipital groove region. Jurgensen's test, we're gonna have our patient seated. We're going to flex the elbow to 90. We're going to fully pronate here, and what I want you to do is to resist and try to supinate I'm not gonna let you do it. Go ahead and push, 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 and then relax. While you're doing this, we should be palpating the bicipital groove, and a positive special test will be pain or reproduction of symptoms in that region. Anterior slide test, have your patient seated, and from here, take your hand and just put it on your hip, fingers forward, thumb back. I want this elbow facing backwards towards me slightly. I'm going to stabilize the scapula right here. I'm going to give an axial force, so I'm trying to push that ball anteriorly and superiorly in the socket, just like so. A positive special test would be pain or reproduction of your patient's familiar symptoms in the front portion of the shoulder. Crank test. We're going to abduct the patient's shoulder to 160 degrees. From here, I'm gonna apply an axial load, so trying to push that ball into the socket. From here, I'm gonna go into internal rotation, and external rotation, back and forth. A positive special test is either apprehension or clicking. Another really effective way to diagnose slap lesions is just by simply subscribing to the Fitness Pain Free channel. If you do that, I'll send you a free gift. It's an app, it's called a slap detector app. Open up the app, just like so, hit the go button, you just place the phone on your patient's shoulder for 30 seconds. When you pick it up, it'll be either green or red. Green means, great, you have a slap tear. Red, no slap tear, unfortunately. I'm just kidding, but you should still subscribe to the channel. Dynamic labral shear. We have the patient seated. From here, I'm going to grab the arm. I'm going to abduct and externally rotate fully. I'm also going to maximally horizontally abduct. From here, I apply a bit of an anterior force at the humerus. I'm gonna go from 90 degrees of abduction all the way up to 150 and then right back down again. And a positive special test would be a painful pop or click. Biceps load two or KIM two test. We have the patient supine. We're going to abduct to 120. From here, 90 degrees of elbow flexion. I'm gonna go into maximal external rotation. And from here, I want you to push against me like you're flexing your elbow nice and strong and then relax. A positive special test would be pain or reproduction of the patient's familiar symptoms. Bicipital groove tenderness. You're gonna have your patient seated. And then from here, we're going to go into 10 degrees of internal rotation. 
The idea is if I go from neutral, 10 degrees of internal rotation, that's gonna place the long head of the bicep right underneath the acromion. So you can find the AC joint, go straight down, palpate right into this groove. If that reproduces the patient's familiar symptoms, that's a positive special test. So I think the biggest elephant in the room with slap tests is that the sensitivities and the specificities are generally speaking quite poor. Now there's potentially a few reasons why. So at least in the study by Dean et al in 2023, the sensitivities and specificities were at, for athletes were very different than the sensitivities and specificities for a general population. So if you're looking at baseball players, they're probably gonna have different sensitivities and specificities than someone who doesn't do any sport whatsoever, right? The other thing is that there are different mechanisms of injury for slap lesions within the shoulder. So a couple of theorized ones, it's basically when I throw a baseball, I'm an end range horizontal abduction external rotation, right? And when I do this, my bicep is very active. Bicep attached to the labrum, this is called a peel back mechanism. So if I do a lot of throwing, I could have the bicep tugging on the labrum, pulling off the glenoid peel back mechanism to cause the injury. The other place where people may get a slap tear is through the follow throughs. If I'm throwing a baseball and I come across my body through here and I release and then I have to decelerate my arm, those eccentric forces can create a slap tear as well. You can also have a slap tear falling. So if I fall, put my arm behind me, land on the ground, it pushes the ball anterior superior in the socket, you could have a forceful compression. So basically squishing the biceps tendon in the labrum between the humerus and the acromion and create a slap tear. Lastly, I see a lot of athletes with slap pathology from bench press and dip. So bench press and dip are the most painful exercises. When I'm really far back in my bench press here, long head of the biceps is going to wrap around the humerus onto the labrum. And then we tend to forget about this, but long head of the biceps actually flexes the shoulder, right? And it's most active between zero and 30 degrees, which is where a lot of the bench press takes place. All that tugging and all that tensile loading may cause a labral tear over the course of time. Right? So if you think about it, if you have an athlete where their mechanism of injury is potentially a peel back mechanism, right? So here, maybe that biceps load or Kim 2 test is gonna be best. If you have a patient where you think the follow through is what hurt him here, maybe the O'Brien's test is best, right? For that person that bench presses a lot, maybe that more dynamic speeds test is appropriate for them. If you have a patient that fell here, then maybe that anterior slide is more appropriate. And despite the sensitivities and specificities being quite poor, Dean et al. in 2023, the paper we're mentioning, also combined a bunch of tests together. And what they found is when you combine several tests, the sensitivities go up, the specificities go up as well, to the point where they're actually decent tests now. The most specific tests were the Jurgensen test, the anterior slide, and the biceps load too. The dynamic labral shear, O'Brien's test, and crank test were the most sensitive tests. So now you know a bunch about diagnosing slap tears, you still need to know about other types of labral pathology, such as anterior shoulder instability, to round out your clinical examination. I have a video for you, I'm gonna leave a link in the corner. It's all about diagnosing anterior shoulder instability. So go ahead and click on that link and I'll see you there.